I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the Wachung Borough Board of Education on June 21st, 2022 at 7 p.m. May we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome to a meeting of the Board of Education of the Borough of Wachung. Please be advised that this and all meetings of the board are open to the public and media consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act, and that the advance notice required therein has been provided. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Borough of Wachung, at which formal action may be taken. This meeting is being live streamed on the district website, where a recording of the meeting also will be posted. The public will have an opportunity to be heard as shown on the agenda at points in the meeting provided for the public to address the board. Recording or photographing other than for private personal use requires the consent of parents slash guardians whose children may be included in the image. May we have a roll call please? Mr. Barbella. Mr. Buccarelli. Here. Mrs. Harvey. Here. Mr. Ingracia? Here. Mr. McDonald? Here. Mrs. Murad? Here. Ms. Sedbani? Mrs. Scharf? Here. We have six board members present. Okay. Um, we are going to start off with our board vacancy. So at this time, I would like to ask Dr. Joe to come up and introduce herself to the board before we nominate and appoint a new board member. Good evening, um, board members uh, and the superintendent. Uh, my name is Yunfei Zhou. Um, a short introduction, I am a um, Bolton resident since 2018. I have a family of four, my husband and two boys, nine year old and six year old. Both of, the, both of them attending Bayberry, uh, kindergarten and uh, third grade. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I sent in my application two weeks ago. Uh, once I learned there's a vacancy, this will be my first time um, to serve on a board, uh, but I'm very excited. I think uh, it's, it's time for me uh, to make some personal contribution to our community. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, so at this time, the Wachung Borough Board of Education, oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, so at this time, the Wachung Borough Board of Education will nominate and appoint a new board member to fill the vacancy for a term that expires on December 31st, 2022 and will serve through to the reorganization meeting in January, 2023. <clears throat> Are there any nominations? I nominate Dr. Zhou. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? I, I know that uh, we only had one applicant but uh, you know, I've reviewed her CV and her letter and uh, I'm uh, excited. I think we were lucky to get a, a very well qualified citizen of Wachung to, uh, to undertake this responsibility to be a board member and I thank her. Anyone else? Just wanted to congratulate Dr. Zhou. Congratulations and we look forward to you being on the board. Can we have a roll call, please? Since we only have one nominee, you can just vote yes or no. Uh, Mr. Barbella? Yes. Mr. Buccarelli? Yes. Mr. Ingracia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Murad? Yes. Ms. Zedvani? Yes. Mrs. Scharf? Yes. And Mrs. Harvey? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Um, we're going to go on to the um, executive session. Um, can I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Mr. Pepe, can you please read the reason for us going into executive session? Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-11, permits the Board of Education to meet in closed session to discuss certain matters. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education adjourns to closed session to discuss a matter rendered confidential by federal or state law student matters, a collective bargaining agreement and or negotiations related to it, <clears throat> and pending and or anticipated litigation or contract uh, negotiation and or matters of attorney client privilege. Be it further resolved, the minutes of this closed session will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. This closed session will be followed by an open session where action will be taken. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna be going into the art room maybe. Um, but it's probably going to be no less than 30 minutes, just so everybody knows. Okay, but you guys can stay here. We're going to move to another room. Can I have a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we're um, actually, um, I'd like to ask our New Jersey School Board Association representative, Gwen Thornton, to please come up. Um, Gwen was asked to join us this evening to provide her background and experience for the board and community on uh, the recent news articles that appeared. Good evening. It is nice to be back, although I didn't think I would be here this quickly, but I am glad to be back to visit with you a little bit. Um, I thought it might be helpful just to give you a little context historically about the situation that you find yourself in. And clearly there was oversight. Um, it was an error, but you are not alone in that. Um, there, were, there are multiple districts across the state um, in Camden County, Hunterton County, Cumberland County, Sussex County, who have all, hmm? Morris County, um, that's one I missed, um, who have all found themselves in this particular predicament. Um, the change was really the result of the election being moved when Governor Christie signed the law, allowing districts to move their elections from um, April to November. And with that, of course, um, the shift was that instead of your business administrator and board secretary being responsible for administration of the election, it became the responsibility of the county clerk. Um, and so, for example, in Somerset County, there are 21 different municipalities that the county clerk is responsible for, two congressional districts within that county elections, the primaries, um, that doesn't count the New Jersey state legislative districts, and then all of the school board uh, elections within that as well. So um, I think that it, ha it has been a bit of a challenge across the state um, for various reasons with some of the county clerks and it's through no fault of theirs. I think they're probably very underpaid and overworked for the number of elections they're responsible for running. Um, and so as a result, there have been these instances um, where boards have gotten off sync with their elections by virtue of people who have had to resign or moved out of town or for whatever set of circumstances, you had a vacancy. And of course, you know, if the vacancy occurs um, within 60 days of an election, right, then you don't have that opportunity to have the seat um, for the remaining portion of the term of the persons um, who has left onto that ballot, in which case you are then permitted to sit until after the next election to the following one. But if a resignation and an appointment occur outside of the 60 day window, then that seat should be on the ballot the next November. Um, and so that is really sort of the rationale of what has happened um, and why occasionally 
boards have gotten off sync um, because it is very confusing and the county clerks are really very busy with all of the various kinds of elections that they have to run both the primaries and then the general elections whether you're talking at the municipal level or the county level, the county elections, they do some fire um, um, district elections as well. Um, and so it is really a very challenging kind of piece. But, you know, again, when I used to sit on the board, our business administrator handled all of the election pieces. Um, and so you would file your petition to run with your business administrator, they would draw the positions on the ballot and they would handle all of those administrative tasks around the election, but that changed in 2012. And so since that time, we have had examples where this has happened. Um, so we just need to be diligent about making sure that we are following the procedures and processes and, and following <coughs> up with the county clerks, because I think sometimes because we're nonpartisan, because we're at the bottom of the ballot, <laughs> literally, um, not figuratively, but literally, um, sometimes it's easy to have something be overlooked through nobody's fault um, whatsoever. It's not my intention to throw anyone under the bus here, but just rather to give you some clarity um, around those kinds of facts. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, whoever did the reporting wasn't able to, to probably talk to our communications department who could have given them that same information around the various instances where it's happened. Um, but I wanted to clear that up because I didn't want you to think that you were alone um, or that this was you know, the first and only and was extraordinary. Um, hopefully it never happens again and we're all trying to be very vigilant. Um, but once it has happened and you're notified by the municipal officials and there's not an election, you have no choice but to just wait until the next regularly scheduled election and then that seat goes up on that next ballot. So, you know, that is the remedy and that has been the remedy for every single school district that finds itself in the same position because you can't hold a special election for one seat in one community. It would be very cost prohibitive um, and that's certainly not something that would be done under the law. So questions that I can answer for any of you. Well, if you think of any, um, you all know how to find me, email me, call me. I'm always happy to talk to any and all board members. Um, I hope that the rest of the summer is cooler, um, but quiet and peaceful as well. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. I'm okay, we'll move on to uh, board member comments. <clears throat> and I was going to just make a statement on behalf of the board. Um, and I wanna thank Gwen Thornton, our New Jersey School Board uh, Association representative for providing background on when the election law changed in 2012, which moved the supervision of the school election responsibility from the districts to the county clerk and the election date to November. I hope her experience and background have provided the Board of Education and the community with much needed clarity and context on this matter. In May 2021, Kevin McDonald was selected by the Wachung Board of Education to fill an unexpired seat. At that time, the Board of Education and Administration were unaware that the seat he was filling would need to be placed on the ballot for the November 2021 election. This misunderstanding was not an intentional action by the board, administration, or the clerk's office. If any board member serving on the board at that time knew that the vacant seat should have been put on the November 2021 ballot or currently claims to have known this, they surely never brought that information to anyone's attention. The county brought this information to our business administrator's attention after the deadline had passed to get that seat on the November 2021 ballot. The November 2021 election would have had three three-year seats and one two-year seat listed if the county clerk had brought the oversight to the business administrator's attention before the deadline had passed. Since the deadline was missed, the county told him the seat would need to be placed on the November 2022 ballot for a one-year seat. The administration made our board attorney aware of this inadvertent oversight 
and the vice president and I were informed of this unintentional oversight in September, which we told Mr. McDonald. Since the deadline passed, there was no action for the board to take. None of the people involved were advised by the county or our board attorney to make a public statement about the accidental oversight. And no one advised us that Kevin McDonald couldn't serve beyond January. Instead, Mr. McDonald was appointed to fill a vacant seat, which because the seat was not placed on the ballot in 2021 remained vacant and he continued to fill that seat as a result of his appointment. This unfortunate oversight was a mistake. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. Our board attorney has assured us that having Mr. McDonald stay in the unexpired seat until it could be placed on the November 2022 ballot has not invalidated his position on our board. Mr. McDonald has been and continues to be a valuable member with his commitment and dedication to the school district and the students. It was always our intention to place the appropriate seats on any upcoming ballot in which Kevin McDonald and any other interested qualified resident would have the opportunity to run for that position. Once we became aware of this oversight, we placed it on the next year's ballot. Even though Kevin remains a valuable part of the board, this is not about the person sitting in the seat. It's about the seat itself, recognizing the mistake, correcting it and allowing our community an equitable opportunity to run for an open seat on the Wachung Board of Education. In addition to providing more clarity on this situation, I have seen all the correspondences between the reporter, the superintendent and Mr. McDonald in which they answered all of the reporter's questions and were even thanked for their cooperation. I hope that the community knows the Wachung Board of Education and this administration continue to strive to provide accurate information and do what is best for the students that attend our schools. I hope that I have cleared things up and have explained that when this inadvertent oversight occurred, we are a Board of Education that admits to those mistakes and corrects them. I believe you will find individuals on this Board of Education who are your neighbors and friends who volunteer and dedicate their time to making the Wachung schools better for our community. Are there any other board member comments? Okay, so we're gonna move on to uh, superintendent's remarks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I hope everyone's enjoying summer. Our ESY and summer learning programs are progressing smoothly here at school and our staff is hard at work cleaning and preparing the schools for September. We continue our planning and that includes the review of our security protocols. I wanna thank the police department and the borough for their time, expertise and ongoing support. Though not on the agenda, I'll note a nice letter Principal Kidd received from the United Family and Children's Society in Plainfield, thanking the students and staff who contributed to the Valley View Day of Giving. The summer goodie bags of coloring books, crayons, and Play-Doh, as well as toothbrushes and toothpaste and individual notes of encouragement were much appreciated. That will do it for these midsummer remarks. Our principals and Ms. Toto will join us in August Best wishes for the remainder of summer. Thank you, George. <clears throat> We're gonna move on to committee reports. Kevin, can you please give an update uh, for human resources? Uh, yes, thank you, Dory. Um, the HR and personnel committee met on this past Tuesday, uh, July 19th at 4.30. Um, present were myself, uh, Jen Sharf, Dory Harvey, and Mr. Alexis. Um, first, we discussed uh, SEL coordinator, social and emotional learning coordinator. Um, the principals currently work with the counselors to coordinate and manage the SEL program. Um, because of the nature of the district's financial condition, uh, we don't have funds available at this time um, to hire an, out, uh, an independent SEL coordinator. Um, in addition, we have other needs that are higher on our priority list. So um, the committee was not in favor of any further investigation or action at this time. Next, we discussed um, school security. Uh, Mr. Alexis raised the issue of exploring the possibility of um, having an SRO for the district, which is a school resource officer. 
Um, the lack of budgetary funds is a major obstacle, but the committee was in favor of researching whether it could be worked out. And uh, Mr. Alexis is gonna look into it further and then report back to the committee. Uh, finally, we discussed a number of potential board agenda items that are on for tonight, um, including the approval of a supervisor for building and grounds, um, approving a uh, maintenance staff member, establishing an ESL and world language position at Valley View, um, resignation, a couple revisions to the uh, substitute teachers list and um, volunteers, uh, ESL program preparation for the 2022-2023 school year, and appointing um, district substitutes. Uh, Mr. Alexis explained these items, um, and there are also two that will not appear on the agenda this month, which were for um, a leave replacement teacher and a special education teacher. Uh, the committee was in favor of the recommendations that do appear on this month's board agenda. And finally, we concluded um, with an update from our ad hoc referendum committee. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Rich, can you give us an update on the operations finance committee and right after the ad hoc? I'll do them both at once. So uh, we had our, our uh, Operations Finance Committee meeting on Wednesday, July 13th. Uh, all committee members were present, uh, Joe Barbella, uh, Anthony Gracia, and Kevin McDonald, as well as uh, Superintendent Alexis Rich Pepe and our Supervisor of Grounds, Paul Spano, um, as well as DRG Architects. Uh, Mr. Pepe informed the committee that Watchung Hills Regional High School only received one bid for student transportation buses for <clears throat> and for only two of the eight tiered routes. Uh, the high school's going out to bid and directly contacting as many bus companies as possible to encourage them to bid any or all of the eight routes. Uh, it's a very challenging time for, uh, for uh, student transportation these days due to uh, rising prices and uh, the lack of uh, qualified um, bus drivers. Uh, next, the committee reviewed um, the results of the collaborative federal desk monitoring <clears throat> audit, um, uh, the plan developed by the administration in response to the CFDM report. There were no major findings. Um, and the committee was satisfied with the action plan for the suggestions uh, in the uh, CFDM report. Uh, with respect to the referendum, Mr. Ingracia updated the committee on the July 12th ad hoc referendum committee discussion. He reported that the ad hoc committee had made progress by acknowledging committee members' concerns and agreeing to recommendations related to the referendum potential projects list. Uh, I then informed the committee of the specific recommendations from the ad hoc committee regarding the projects. The consensus from the ad hoc committee was to include the original HVAC replacement projects, excluding any projects that have already been completed and to work with engineers to review replacement options other than replacing old units with the same type of new units. So this basically means is, is there any other solution um, that would be more effective um, Nobody has recommended that yet, um, but we've asked them to take another look at that. Um, projects recommended for reconsideration in, that were on the uh, old referendum um, that the ad hoc committee was saying we should reconsider for the new uh, referendum, i.e. whether they should be in or out, uh, included the storage building, the outdoor learning commons at Valley View, the interior wall condition repair and the number of ADA toilet rooms at Baybury. There are also new projects recommended for consideration, including an additional security camera at Baybury, air conditioning for the gyms and kitchen upgrades. The committee requested more information about options for potential kitchen upgrades. And I also informed the committee at, at the next ad hoc meeting would focus on the timing of the board resolution to move forward with the referendum. So let me just take a, a minute for those of you who are not familiar with uh, what's going on with, uh, with the referendum and the ad hoc committee. Uh, as you all probably well know, we had uh, put a referendum uh, out to the public 
last year um, that uh, uh, did not pass um, and by you know a very close vote. Um, there's work that clearly needs to be done. At the time, I think it was the sentiment of some board members and some members of the public that um, the board did not seek the input of the general public um, to a degree that it should have last time. And with that in mind, uh, Mr. Ingrassia proposed that we have an ad hoc committee formed uh, to get the input from the public. And I'll just tell you a little bit about the process. We had a, a general meeting, which was noticed, and it was virtual, which we invited anybody in the, uh, in the community to attend and asked them um, if they would be interested in uh, working on the ad hoc committee to meet periodically and talk about uh, the referendum. We thought at that time that we would probably have to turn away people and slim it down to a, uh, a committee where we could actually get work done and didn't have too many people, but it turned out that not that many people showed up even at the virtual meeting. So he accepted everybody. And then some, and then representatives from special interest groups uh, in the community, such as the teachers union and uh, CPAG and the PTO, et cetera. Um, we have now had four meetings. And uh, at first, I think the progress was slow, but um, you know, recognizing that these things, you know, have to move along and take time once even the board has voted on it. We had a very productive meeting last time and agreed uh, to a large extent on the scope of the projects. And we are going at our next meeting to talk about finalizing that list and then bringing back to the board and the public an outline of what those projects would be and what the referendum would look like next time. We think it's very important for the public to pay attention to this and give us the feedback um, because at the September meeting then, so this would be the August meeting where we outline it, September meeting where we, it's refined and presented um, for a vote ideally. Um, and then just about public engagement, I just want to say we've, we've done our best to, to reach out to the public and um, there was debate on the ad hoc committee about whether to send out a survey or not. <clears throat> um, the consensus was that a survey uh, wouldn't be that helpful because um, number one, we couldn't actually agree on the form or the questions to ask. And number two, given the response rate of past surveys, we didn't think it would be um, uh, very wise to base our whole plan uh, on uh, a low response rate, for example, right? Um, so what we did do to further reach out to the public was we just said in a free form way, uh, here's where you can find all the information on last year's referendum. Here's the list of the projects. Take a look at this, tell us what you like or what you don't like, or give us other suggestions on what you would like to see or not see in a referendum. We communicated this by email to the school email list, email to the town email list, a sign at Barrow Hall on the electric sign and an advertisement in the Echo Sentinel. And we got five responses back. So I think the moral of the story is we've done our best to reach out to the public. Uh, I'm making this uh, 
additional appeal now in public that next meeting, if you would like to learn about this, attend or watch where we will be after our next ad hoc meeting and before the next board meeting, setting out what the projects will be again and explaining the referendum. And, uh, and the next meeting after that in September voting on it. So uh, again, I'm encouraging public participation. Um, so I think that uh, we will have done everything we can to uh, engage the public at that point. And that's all we have. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Jen, can you give the curriculum committee update? Yes, the curriculum committee met on Tuesday, July 19th at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, myself and Dory Harvey were present. Uh, Ms. Sedvani was unable to attend and the administration team was also there, uh, minus Mrs. Fickner. Uh, we discussed, discussed the uh, Wachung Historical Society. The committee discussed the possibility of including uh, less, excuse me, we discussed watching history. Uh, the committee discussed the possibility of including lessons on the borough history during the end of the year. The administration will look into this and provide an update at a future meeting. Uh, we also discussed the possibility of trips to uh, the municipal services in town as well. Summer curriculum writing progress is being made toward the goal of completing the revisions in time for board approval at the August meeting. Uh, special services update was given to us by Mrs. Detota. ESY started on July 5th at both schools, ELA, math, SEL, part-time PE, the arts and related services are included. The child study team is working on evaluations and participating in meetings. Ms. Detota also alerted the committee to a potential change in the law regarding eligibility for special services. Approval of all field trips in advance. The committee was in favor of creating a list of all potential field trips for the coming school year and approving them all at once, either at the August or September meeting. Uh, new business, uh, we discussed uh, some items that had been brought up at a previous meeting of shared special ed services among sending districts negotiated tuitions to send receive students within sending districts and or other districts. Ms. Detota explained that we will have the maximum number of students allowed by law this year. The following year, we anticipate the need for an additional autism class. Over the last three years, we have had requests for placing students in our autism and preschool classes from the other regional districts. The committee will discuss this again after the policy committee explores the acceptance of non-resident students for the autism and preschool programs. Uh, new business, we also received an update on the ad hoc referendum committee. That's it. Okay. I have a question on that, if I could. Sure. Um, I guess I just wanted to ask if there is communication between the curriculum committee and if it's um, related to some of what we've seen, we can maybe uh, here when the policy update is given, but uh, for uh, engagement uh, with the public regarding some of the um, new curriculum that might be coming out prior to the board voting on it. Is there, is some of the policy looks like maybe it's um, related to involving uh, parents in the, in the wider district community in um, engagement, but I'm not sure if that's applying to anything that's going on in the curriculum committee. So uh, I've been reading in other districts are doing outreach uh, to the community for you know, certain uh, curriculum items. And I just wondered if that was going to happen before the board is asked to vote on the full curriculum for the coming school year. We can always discuss it in committee. Um, my recommendation would be if you want more of a thorough response, it's probably best to contact the chair of the committee or myself prior. I would so put, that yeah, put it in an email to me and then we'll put it on the agenda. Yeah, so that that information can be provided for you. Okay, it just seems like we're getting short on time to try to. All right, which, which would have been great if we got those thoughts before we had our last curriculum meeting, but we didn't. So here we are. 
And if you send it in an email to Jen, she'll have it on the agenda and we'll do our best. Thank you. Actually, I think I asked that question in policy and George, you said that you'd mention, bring it up in curriculum. I don't know, do you have an opportunity? Yeah, I'm not sure we we're talking about the same thing, but. Uh, so um, health uh, curriculum, health and. Um, oh, you would, yes, you would ask that question. And, yes. and I talked about the process that we use for curriculum where the, um, the teachers are working in conjunction with the principals, developing the revised curriculum to meet the standards, uh, the New Jersey student learning standards. And we will be sharing that with the curriculum committee. And when we share um, uh, attachments and agendas with the committees, we share it with the entire board. Yeah. No, I was asking, um, I'd asked, remember I mentioned uh, Bernard's for instance, that they did a survey, community survey, and then if that was something that we were thinking that if we could do, and you said that you would ask, the, I don't know, maybe it was misinterpreted. Yeah, no, no, we, yeah, no, you brought that up, yes, yeah. but I explained the process that we were using, okay, and so the survey wasn't contemplated. Okay. No. Okay. No. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jen. Um, Joe, uh, Joe, can you please give us the policy committee update? Sure. Uh, we met on Monday, this past Monday, the eighteenth. Um, the first reading of items are on the agenda tonight, um, roughly 50% of which are mandatory, nothing very substantive. Um, the topics just addressed now are not on the agenda for tonight. They'll be discussed in curriculum and then in conjunction with policy at future meetings. Thanks, Joe. Um, Kevin, can you please give us the legislative liaison update if there's any? I don't have anything for tonight, Dory. Thanks. Okay, Jen, is there anything for Somerset County Ed Services Commission? Uh, they have not had a meeting since June. Our next meeting is August 3rd. Um, Amber, is there anything for Somerset County School Boards Association? There's no update. No. Okay. Any. And then uh, for New Jersey School Boards Association, um, the only thing that I saw was that they are, I think they already have been, but the workshop conference for 2022 um, is Monday, October 24th to Wednesday, October 26th in Atlantic City Convention Center. So if any board members are interested, I believe you have to work through uh, Mr. Pepe in order to get registered for that. Um, other than that, um, our board goals were adopted at the last meeting. Um, so Jen and I will work with George to place topics under board business to discuss, such as the referendum, if there needs to be um, updates on that or any discussion. Um, and that actually might also just be on the agenda at some point, um, like Rich said in September for us to vote on. Um, the shared vision around norms will show up on there as well. Um, and then also preparing for the 24, 28, five-year strategic plan. Um, so that will uh, show up first. And I believe Anthony sent an email to have the five-year strategic plan put on this agenda. Um, and I believe I put this in the email, but we need this next cycle to go around in committee to just kind of give everyone the, the basis of everything so that we can then all be prepared for a more fruitful discussion um, at the August meeting, okay? Um, comments from the public on agenda items. We welcome input from the public. There are two times during the meeting when the public is invited to speak. The first opportunity to comment on agenda items only is now. The second opportunity for public comment is towards the end of the meeting. Total time allotted for public comment is 30 minutes. Before you make your comment, please state your name and address. In the event it appears the public comment portion of the meeting may exceed 30 minutes, the presiding officer may limit each statement made by a participant to three minutes duration. Comments submitted to the board secretary prior to the meeting will be read first. Our public forums are not structured as a question and answer session, but rather are offered as opportunities to share input with the board. In instances where the board feels a response is needed, the presiding officer or superintendent will address the comment. New Jersey statutes do not permit the board to discuss personnel or hiring in public session. Names of students should not be used. 
Members of the public should consider their comments in light of legal rights of those affected and identified in their comments and be aware that they are personally legally responsible with potential liability for comments that they make to the board. The board shall not be held liable for comments made by members of the public. Is there anyone here who would like to make a comment on an agenda item? Okay, so we're gonna move on to action items. Amber, can you please move um, our one administrative item? I move uh, administrative item A1, approve minutes of previous meetings. Is there a second? second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Barbella? Yes. Mr. Baccarelli? Yes. Mr. Ingracia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Murad? Yes. Ms. Edvani? Yes. Mrs. Scharf? Yes. Mrs. Harvey? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, Kevin, can you please move personnel items? Uh, yes, I move personnel items B1, ratify appointment of supervisor of building and grounds, B2, appoint district maintenance worker, B3, establish the following Valley View ESL slash world language position, B4, accept resignation, B5, approve special education and related arts staff for the 2022 extended school year program revised, B6, approve volunteers for the 2022 ESY and Title I summer programs revised. B7, appoint teacher to prepare the 2022 to 2023 ESL program. And B8, appoint district substitutes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I just had a brief question on the, uh, the positions that are uh, new positions where we're establishing the following position. Um, are, are any of these, these were all covered in the original budget process that we're going through. There wasn't uh, additional funds or anything uh, found after the budget process that allowed these uh, to be funded. It's still only based on the original approved uh, Correct, budget. They, that's in the budget, that, that position there. Right, okay. Are you talking about the maintenance staff one or no, the I language I was, ESL one? The new, uh, the new position, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, just wanted to make sure that that's we're still in the budget. Yeah, we all in I talked about needing the, the ESL teacher, and this is a way to make sure that we can have someone also to fit the needs of the district. Thank you. So it's a combined position. Thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Barbella? Yes. Mr. Buccarelli? Yes. Mr. Ingracia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Murad? Yes. Ms. Zedvani? Yes. Mrs. Scharf? Yes. And Mrs. Harvey? Yes. Motions pass. Okay, Rich, can you please move operation items? Yes, uh, I move item C1, approved payment of bills. Item C2, approved transfer of funds. Item C3, accept financial reports. And item C4, approved professional travel and related expenses. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Barbella? Yes. Mr. Buccarelli? Yes. Mr. Ingracia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Murad? Yes. Ms. Zedvani? Yes. Mrs. Scharf? Yes. And Mrs. Harvey? Yes. Motion passed. Uh, Joe, can you please move policy items? Sure, move E1, approve policies and regulations for first reading. E2, abolish policy and regulation. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Barbella? Yes. Mr. Buccarelli? Yes. Mr. Ingracia? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Murad? Yes. Ms. Sedvani? Yes. Mrs. Scharf? Yes. And Mrs. Harvey? Yes. Motion's passed. Um, and I didn't, like I, I mentioned before, we got the email from Anthony, but um, we don't have anything else listed under board business. Is there any other board business to discuss? 
I, I just wanted to say, I'm not looking to uh, really go through the whole planning process here, but my comment on the strategic planning timeline was just, uh, I wanted to mention that when you go into the website uh, for the last uh, five-year strategic plan, it provided their timeline that they worked from uh, when putting that one together. And so if you take those dates and transcribe them to current times, we had, we would be understanding the process would be the summer of 2022 right now. And uh, there would be a community planning day in the fall of 2022. And then there's about five other items that, that follow after that as you, as you lead up to fi finalizing the strategic plan. So I had reached out to Gwen Thornton by email just to say, you know, this is what we're, we showed from our last strategic planning. She mentioned that there's some flexibility in that um, for each board to schedule things how they see fit. And so I just wanted to make mention that we should be keeping in mind that at some point there, the second item was a uh, community planning day that they did in the fall last time. So whether the understanding the process happens in the summer or just before that is, it's our choice, but I think that we should really start looking at some of these items very closely, very soon. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll move on to comments from the public. On any item, just please remember to state your name and address. Good evening to the board members and to my fellow Watchung residents. My name is Jennifer Vincess Kua. I'm at 316 Sterling Road. And uh, my question for this evening has been uh, shared perhaps in other meetings, um, but it's all related to school crisis response planning. Uh, some of these elements were touched in your committees. However, I'd like to hear a little bit more in terms of safety and security for the premises of the schools. And so whether that means that there are uh, certain procedures for all sorts of access to doors, perhaps technologies, um, school resource officers. Um, you know, I am very much interested in hearing more about that. If we think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, safety is the primary need. Um, and in lieu of the unfortunate events in April, um, as a parent and a concerned resident, I would like to um, see that there is uh, additional planning done in regards to the safety for our schools. So that's just one area related to crisis. And if I may, um, the other component is uh, a law that was put into effect, the school safety drill law and the notifications in which parents are to receive when different types of drills are done during the day and it's to be reported at the end of the day. I have not seen perhaps those notifications and maybe it's an email blockage or something of that nature, but I know that that is important just so that as parents, we can follow up with our children and ensure that they are grasping the concepts and understanding the need to adhere to um, personnel and the different procedures that are put in place for their safety. Um, the other is just in general, in terms of emergency notification systems. I know that currently our district adopts um, having emails and uh, a call that is placed to our numbers. However, as a parent, if we want to have contact with someone, uh, that's not just the main office, but we know that there's an emergency. I'm not aware that there is a specific contact person or deemed um, crisis response personnel that we should be outreaching to. Um, and so sometimes having these things in place can facilitate the communication between the school district and to the parents, et cetera. Um, and lastly, um, kind of in continuation of this, um, sometimes there are changes in terms of teachers. We have substitutes and that's not always um, something that I am aware of as, as a parent. And just again, in terms of facilitating communication so I know where my children are with whom, I don't always know if there's been a change in regards to substitute teachers for the day. And it's only until I ask my children that I know that there's been a change. And some, and maybe I'm old school, but back in the day, we used to get a phone call letting us know that that was occurring for the day. And so these are just kind of some of the things that come to mind. Um, and the last, and I promise, I know my uh, uh, items have been kind of lengthy, 
but is uh, just to ensure that we do have um, full staff nurse at each school. I know for some time we had only one nurse that was uh, splitting up her time back and forth. And um, just as a parent who has a child with um, allergies and such, uh, that was very worrisome. So I hope that that has been resolved and there is permanent separate nurses, right? Okay, fantastic. Thank you for comforting <laughs> as I am just um, asking tons of questions to you all. But again, I appreciate your efforts and what you do each and every time that you meet. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I can just add also that, that we are, as I said earlier, and as I said back in June, we are uh, looking at our safety protocols, reviewing them not only with the regional districts, but also with the local police and the borough resources, the OEM department. Um, so we're looking at making sure that we're doing everything possible, of course, because safety is our number one priority. Uh, we do have, uh, as Mrs. Harvey just indicated to you, we do have a full-time nurse in each school. Um, and we, it took a long time to fill that vacancy and we were working with substitute services and it was, uh, it was a difficult time, but we have a full-time nurse in Bayberry this, this year, uh, this past year and, um, and moving into next year. So we're good there. Um, I'm trying to think, you mentioned a few other things. I didn't write them down, uh, but you know, it, the, the part about the substitute, um, the phone call, I'm not familiar with that where people get calls about substitutes, but we do have our emergency broadcast system that we use for inclement weather or other, you know, emergency notifications and busing issues we had this year, of course, and we would send those out with a phone call, an email, and a text message. Um, and the, we are following the law, with the, the updated law about the uh, notification when we have a, um, a safety and security drill. Uh, I've seen those go out, so um, yeah, the, you, you should be receiving those in I can look into that also to make sure you are receiving them next year. Thank you very much, Superintendent. If I could add one other item on the matter raised about the safety enhancements. You know, one thing I was disappointed um, with last year with the referendum not passed is that one component of that budget were for safety enhancements. Um, and it was fairly material. So, you know, what I would implore the community to do is be engaged, be involved, in the referendum that's coming this year, those safety enhancements are included um, in that as well. Um, and to come out and consider and vote um, because it's important as part of the referendum. Um, so I, I found that to be one of the most critical aspects uh, of you know, what the referendum was about beyond you know, the standard maintenance and HVAC and other considerations and enhanced learning. But uh, clearly, as you pointed out, and, and I would agree with you in my own personal opinion, uh, safety is precedent amongst everything. Um, so, you know, that's an aspect of the referendum. So I, I would implore you and the community members to, to think about that as part of the referendum. Fantastic. And I think yeah. as we think of um, public engagement, if we can, and, and I'm sure you guys have, but really highlight the benefits um, and spell it out as clearly as possible because I, I would imagine most folks missed that component and only saw maybe what they deem as enhancements, aesthetics versus security and safety. And those are two different, not that they're, they can be different, but they there are. So maybe just in terms of public engagement, having those key things uh, pulled out for folks to know We'll hopefully have more people on board, but thank you once again. Yeah, and I just want to make a comment that <clears throat> I think we uh, probably didn't do as good a job on uh, public information after we voted on the referendum last time. So point well taken, and we're addressing it this time um, again with the ad hoc committee after we hopefully get a, a vote uh, from the board. And secondly, uh, we always endeavor to be transparent with the public but on your specific issue of crisis management and emergency response plans, I'm sure you understand that we can't, you know, disclose a lot about that for, for obvious reasons. And when I first got on the board four years ago, um, I wanted to look at it and it's a big binder and I wanted to take it home and they wouldn't let me take it home. So I had to sit there for a couple hours and read it 
Um, but I, you know, uh, we do engage, you know, I know the administration engages regularly with local law enforcement and the other districts. So if it seems like we're not being really specific on that, there's a really good reason for it. No, and I can understand there's definitely um, the specific details of policy and procedure that should not be readily available. Um, but as much as can be communicated, that is, it is in an ongoing way reviewed, looked at, and so highlighting that you've met with Wachung PD on a quarterly basis, or um, that maybe you've invited the public to ask questions on how to bring the good school safety procedures then into a home environment for follow-up and sustainability. All those things could really um, give credence to the work that is being done, but it's just not known about. So, but thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public on any item? Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you for joining us this evening. This meeting is adjourned.